Okay, before uh, put your iPads away, unless you're taking notes on it, quit playing stupid games, and let's do some math. Okay, before we set Evan on fire again, uh, I have a simple question for you, and that would be, could you please give me a point on that line? Any point. Hey. Zero comma four is a good choice. What's special about that point, Meg? It's the y-intercept. Outstanding. Uh, let me back up. How many points are on that line? Infinite. Infinite. So we have one down, a lot to go. Could you give me another point on that line, please? David? One, one. One, one. How do you know that? Outstanding. Give me another point, please. See it? You're Sia, aren't you? Unless you changed your name in the last 48 hours. Are you in the witness protection program now? Negative one comma zero. No, that's not on the line. Got negative two positive two. Negative two positive two. Uh, that is not on the line. Two negative two. Say again. Two comma negative two. Two comma negative two is on the line. Bob. is on the line. Let's go one more. No, you gave me one already. Emma, give me a point. Three comma negative five. Three comma negative five is on the line. Very good. Okay. So for those of you that gave me correct answers, how did you get those points? Emma? How did you get that point? I put in three for X and then for Beautiful. So let's suppose I told you that the X value was 10. What would the Y value be? Negative 26. Okay. This is a fairly basic idea, and we shouldn't have had that much trouble with it. Okay. There are an infinite number of points on that line. However, any point that is on the line must satisfy the condition. Clearly, 0, 4 is uh, the easiest choice, but any one of those other points that aren't crossed out would also be on the line. So we're good with that concept. Yes? Okay. Now... We changed the scenario a little bit. I can't really get, as much as I would like to set Evan on fire, we really, I, it doesn't make any sense. He's already standing in a river and bursts into flames and runs to the other river doesn't make any sense. Okay, so we're just gonna put Evan on a, on a line. And these two lines are parallel. Okay, so you can think of them like train tracks. Train tracks are always parallel to each other. If they're not, the train crashes. And we want to know the distance between those train tracks. Okay, so for discussion purposes, let's use uh, some equations. We'll make this train track uh, y equals 4x minus 4. And we'll make this train track y equals 4x plus 7. Other than the fact that I told you, how do you know those lines are parallel? How do you know they have the same slope? What's the slope of those two lines? Uh, the integer by income. Yeah, what numerical value is what I meant? Uh, no, 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 no. 
you're overthinking it. What's the slope of those two lines? Good. That's always a four. Okay. okay. Four. Okay. They're parallel. Okay. We looked at these when we were solving systems of equations. When you try to find the point of intersection between two parallel lines, you get no solution because they never intersect. We want to know how far it is between those two parallel lines. That distance is always going to be measured along a perpendicular, just like we measured Evan's path once he burst into flames into the river along a perpendicular. So in other words, I want to know that length. So there's the problem. I want to know the distance between those two parallel lines. And that distance has to be measured along a perpendicular. So what some of you are going to do is say, oh, that's easy. I'm going to find the distance between 0, negative 4 and 0, 7. Because those are the two y-intercepts. So those must be the distance between the two points. It doesn't work. Okay, that doesn't guarantee that it's a perpendicular. This is a fairly easy process if you can do one thing. Tell me where Evan is. Good. What coordinates are Evan, are, is Evan at? What coordinates is Evan? Evan is singular, so is that right? Yeah, go. Is Evan a midpoint? Can't, it's a line. Lines don't have midpoints. Train tracks go on forever and ever. See it. I don't know if this is right, but would you set both um, line equations equal to each other? Can't. Won't get a solution. They never intersect. A seven at the y intercept. Say again. A seven at the y intercept. Would you like to put Evan at the y intercept? Yeah. Evan, do you want to be at the y intercept? Sure. Okay. So where would he be then? Zero, negative four. Okay. Oh, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want Evan to be at the y-intercept. I'd rather have Evan over here somewhere. Where else can Evan be? Okay, so where else would you like to put them? Let's get Evan involved. We're talking about him in third person and he's sitting right over there. Evan, it's Friday. What would you like your x coordinate to be? Other than zero, because we dealt with that already. Don't overthink this. It does it's not on your iPad. Just ask you a personal preference. Where would you like your x-coordinate to be? One. One. I've given you an infinite number of solution or possibilities, any number in the universe, and you're choosing one. But two. Okay. I love this country. Evan has chosen his x-coordinate to be one. What's his y-coordinate? Lucy. Zero. Why, Lucy? Well done. Okay. So that point is going to be over here. What do you know about the gray line and the obnoxiously bright yellow line? Yeah. They're the same. So does it matter if we use Evan at the Y intercept or we use Evan at one zero? No. This is still gonna be D. Okay. Uh, you know, and just for giggles, let's put Evan over here. Evan, we're moving you. Your X coordinate is going to change. What would you like your X coordinate to be now? If you tell me to, I'm going to punch you. Five. Oh, you bad man, you. All right. Evan has chosen his X coordinate to be five. If Evan's X coordinate is five, then what is his Y coordinate? Evan. 16, well done.
Whoa. Steep. All three of those lines, sorry, all three of those segments, the gray, the yellow, and the pink, should all be the same length. The distance between parallel lines stays constant. The distance between train tracks stays constant. Are you with me? Good. Olivia, pick. Gray, yellow, or pink? Pink. Beautiful. This table, you're calculating D using the pink. Brody? Yellow or gray? Gray. Thank you. Meg? What did you choose, Brody? Gray. You have yellow. Gray. No. Pink. Good. Yellow. Okay, go. Calculate D's. Using the color you were assigned. Oh wait, hold on. Before you start this work, let me point something out. If I do this, that should look familiar, yes? Okay, good. Go. Oh. For those of you that are struggling, I'll give you one more hint. When I make this other line disappear, I also don't need that anymore. The only thing that did for me is find the points where Evan is located. They are not used in the calculation for D. Finding D, but in order to find D, you have to find the other point. I got zero. 
Evan, what's your middle name? With a C? saying either one of you is right or wrong. I haven't done the problem yet. What'd you get? Okay. But remember, you're looking for a distance, so you found the point. How did the distance one go? What'd you get for an answer? Still plugging and chugging? Pink there, pink where else? Are you guys pink? Okay, go over there, check with them. Get up and go over there. What color are you? Red. What color are you? Yellow. You're yellow, you're sliding back. You three come over here and work with them. I have three different answers, can't have three different answers. Gotta have one answer, figure out 
What's going on? Check your numbers with the same color groups. Everybody's group will have different numbers, except for that final D, which has to be the same length for everybody. I will admit that the yellow group had it the easiest go at it. 
even though the numbers turn out ugly. This is some, I hate to break the news to you, this is some pretty basic algebra that you're supposed to be doing. Okay. The problem I think that many of you are going to run into is a breakdown in understanding what you're doing. Okay? So, that point, let's talk about the yellow one for a second. That point that we started with for Evan is the y-intercept of that other blue line that I erased. Okay? That's where that point came from. If it's the y-intercept for the blue line that's erased, it's also going to be the y-intercept for the yellow line. So it makes it a little bit easier to solve the problem using that information. However, if you go to the pink line, for instance, that point 516 is on the original parallel line, but it's also on the pink line, and that's the gist of the problem. All you need to do for that first line is find a point. There are an infinite number of ways to solve this problem, all based on the selection that you make early on, and that is, where is Evan? Sometimes the choices that you make will be easier, sometimes they will be more difficult. I'm not going to tell you that the y-intercept is always the best way to go, because it's not. Other points could be easier. <coughs> now, why isn't the y-intercept always the best choice? You're still going to get ugly answers what you get for x. Um, for x, I got negative 44, uh, 17. And for y? Negative 57. Okay, so just choosing the y-intercept <laughs> doesn't mean everything is going to be rainbows and gumdrops. You really don't know how bad it's going to be when you start the problem. Okay, so let me give you a couple pieces of advice. I erased that other parallel line for a reason. I erased the other equation of the line for a reason. The common mistake that people make is they go back and use that line. Okay. You don't have to. So I'll, um, Emma, what color are you? Pink. pink. I'm going to solve the pink problem. Okay. First of all, what's the, for all of you, what's the slope of the gray, yellow, and pink line? Say again. Negative 1 over 4. Why, Brody? Good. Okay. And we all agree on that. And that's something that you should just know. So continually, I say to you, you need two things for the equation of a line. You need a point and you need a slope. Some of you are still married to the y-intercept as your point. Get away from that. Just use a point and a slope. So I know then that the equation of that pink line must be y minus 16 equals negative 1 4 times the quantity x minus 5. I'm assuming you're all with me on that, yes? Yes. Okay, that's basic algebra that we did the first eight weeks of class. Now, that point that I labeled C, Emma, how do I now, Naita, I'll put you in a second. Sorry, I lost the ability to speak there. How do I now find the point C? How did you find the point C? Done. Beautiful. Okay. C is the point of intersection between the pink line and the blue line. Therefore, we're going to set the, this pink line equal to the one that I have written in yellow. How do you do that? Well, you can convert that to slope-intercept form if you want. Or what I like to do is just take that puppy and put it in there. 4x plus 7 minus 16 equals negative 1 fourth x plus 5 fourths. We're good to go? Yeah. Excellent. I don't like fractions. So I get 16x, uh, seven, that's, not, that's negative 9 times 4 is negative 36, equals negative x plus 5. And I'm assuming that you can go from there. Emma, what'd you get for points? What's x? Uh, Say that again. 41 Ooh. And when you plug that in, what do you get for y? 283 over 17. Oh. Again, the numbers are going to get ugly, but at this stage, you should have no problems working with ugly numbers. This is the location of the point C. Okay, that's the point where Evan would enter the river to put himself out. 
if he was bursting into flames. Last step is to use a distance formula on your calculator between 516 and these ugly numbers that Emma got. And the distance, if I remember correctly, was 2.67. There we go. So let's talk about the difference between day three and day four. There's only one difference, and that is you have to decide where Evan is. On day three, I told you Evan is at the campsite at this location. In this problem, you choose where Evan is. And that's what's going to be weird is because all of you can choose a different starting point and should get the same answers. Okay, I know at least two different groups got the same answer. So the yellow group got 2.67, Emma's group got 2.67. If you had gray, you should get 2.67. If I created another point where Evan starts, I should get 2.67. That's going to be consistent. The numbers that you get for the point of intersection where he goes into the river are going to be different, some uglier than others. But again, your final answer when you plug into the distance formula should be 2.67. When you start the problem, and so if we back up, I, uh, I had a line in there. Let me see if I can put that line back in there. I had a line right, oh, it's not even close. Holy guacamole. Never mind. There was a line in there with the equation. The equation was y equals, I think it was 4x minus 4. Yeah. Once you pick a location for Evan, get rid of that. So you're not tempted to use it for anything. You don't need it for anything else. Brody. Um. Emma, where'd you plug negative 41 over 17 back in? Did you plug it into the yellow or the pink? Do you remember? Say again? It doesn't matter. What I would do is I would store this number into X and then just type 4X plus 7 on the home screen. It'll do it for you. Convert it back to a fraction. That, I think, is easier than going back and using the slope inter or the point slope form. Okay, questions? Beautiful. Again, once you pick Evan's location, get rid of that other line. Just work with the line where he's going into. We go from a train tracks problem to a burst into flames and run to the river problem by just choosing that point. Mary Day Rose. What? Huh? What's your name in Spanish? Yes, it is. Okay. Anyway, um, I... Sorry, I didn't mean to say it wrong. I was solving for the gray line. And I right. when I plugged the things in, I was getting the wrong thing. I'm a little iffy on what things are. Like, basically, I guess you could say, the, like the x1, x2, y1, y2, you know? For the distance formula. So then I was like, what would happen if I plugged in, because I was trying to solve for the gray line, what would happen if I plugged in the x1 and the y1 from the yellow line? And then I got the right answer. Just a fluke. Okay. What you calculated was the distance between Evan entering here and Evan entering here. But yeah. I still got the right distance after putting it's in. A, it's just a fluke. It's one of those sweet mysteries of life. It's math magic, if you will. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Beautiful. Okay. So let me get into this. And then come over here.